morning, everyone. Buenos dias a todos. You know, if you come to Mass every Sunday, you will, over the course of three years, hear almost the entire text of the four Gospels. You will hear it, which is important because when Jesus was preaching, people heard it before they read it. No? Entonces, en el curso de los tres años de la, de los, uh, de, de las, del ciclo de las lecturas, si uno llega a la misa cada domingo, va a escuchar casi todos los evangelios. Escuchar es importante porque escuchar significa imitar el modo en que el Señor mismo compartió el evangelio, porque en voz viva lo hizo. The Lord shared the gospel in his living voice. That's important because it's an important way by which we as the church today even sort of relive what the early disciples and the crowds lived because when Jesus came into the world, he didn't hand them a book. He told them a story. No? Que cuando el Señor llegó para predicar el, predicar el Evangelio, inicialmente no les dio un libro, les dio, les contaba las parábolas, por ejemplo. He would tell the stories of the parables. I mention this because in the course of this particular year, we've been reading the, through the Gospel of Matthew, and we're now reading the parts towards the end, chapter 25, capítulo 25 de Mateo, lo que estamos leyendo ahorita. But if you remember, early on, in the Gospel of Matthew, as well as in the other Gospels, if you look at them, the Lord Jesus told parables, but the parables seem to change as the Lord goes on through his ministry, no como que cambian un poquito el, el estilo de la parábola cuando el Señor empieza y luego cuando termina su predicación. So, for example, the early parables are usually simple things that we can understand, at least with some explanation. Like the kingdom of God is like a, is like a, a sower who went out and, and, and threw the seed and, and, it, and it grew and, and it multiplied. He talks that way. Or or the farmer who, who puts the, the seed in the ground and, and it grows overnight, he doesn't even know how. ¿No se acuerdan de eso? Que el Señor hablaba de las, de las semillas y que el, el sembrador sale y, y ni sabe cómo va a brotar, pero brota. The early parables have this sense of, of the focus is on the fact that the kingdom of God is something that grows and we don't exactly know how, but it does. Es parte del misterio que quiere compartir al inicio el Señor que el Evangelio, el reino de Dios, es algo que crece y es obra de Dios y nosotros no sabemos exactamente cómo. Pero como la semilla que brota y da fruto. The later parables like today's, no las parábolas que, que predica el Señor en voz viva, ya acercándose al término de su misión, antes de, la, de, su, uh, de entrar en la pasión, uh, se complican un poco. They get a little more complicated, the later parables. Like, now we're talking about people. We're not talking about seeds. Ya no está hablando de las semillas, está hablando de las personas. Y como sabemos, las personas son más complicadas que las semillas. People are more complicated than seeds are. And they're more involved. You remember last Sunday, we heard uh, the parable of the ten virgins, some wise, some were imprudent. And so you kind of get this figure of persons who are interacting and making decisions. No, las, las parábolas que implican la operación de personas implican movimiento y decisiones. ¿Cómo van a decidir? That's different than a seed because a seed just does what it does and that's okay. Because the principle is growth. The principle is multiplication. You see, cuando estaba hablando de las semillas, pues se multiplican. Y ese es el, el punto ¿no? de, las, de, las, de las primeras parábolas. Y el punto sigue siendo el crecimiento. See, the, the point continues to be, even in the late parables, growth. Only now, it has to do with people. And like I said, the decisions we make. Because the mystery of God may grow without us knowing exactly how, but it grows because we're involved in it. Porque lo que significa hoy, por ejemplo, es que el crecimiento del reino de Dios es misterio de Dios y gracia de Dios, pero también implica 
que estamos involucrados nosotros. We're, we're involved in this somehow. That's why the later parables start talking about people and what they do and what they don't do. So in the parable today, you have the, the talents. El señor comparte, el, el dueño comparte los talentos. Y cada uno de los tres, las tres personas tienen que decidir qué van a hacer con este talento. You see, the point is, after he gives the, 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 the Lord who goes away, after he gives the talents to the three persons there, the question is, what are they going to do with them? Implica decisión. El reino va a crecer. Pero también implica que vamos a tomar nosotros decisiones sobre si vamos a cooperar con ese crecimiento o no. Are we going to cooperate with the growth of the kingdom or not? So let's look at this in terms of that, because it, now it's about, more clearly, about our responsibility to advance the kingdom of God. Ya en estas parábolas se trata más de nuestra responsabilidad, nuestra actuación, how we act, what we decide, and what we don't decide. So a couple of things to keep in mind about this fairly lengthy parable, but the points are the similar. First of all, el señor que iba a salir, the man who was going to leave, made a decision. El que iba a salir entregó sus, lo que él poseía. The, the master gave the three what was his. No, sus posesiones. Los entregó a los tres. Which tells us something about the Lord. See, the Lord is the figure here that he trusts us with something. Uh, it's an act of trust. El dueño, el señor en esta parábola, tiene confianza en los que reciben los talentos. And we should realize that. That's an important point. Que nosotros como seres vivos, el señor confía en nosotros. He trusts us and he entrusts us with something. It's his. The talents. But he gives them to us. He gives it away. It's just good to notice this because the Lord is generous from the very beginning. He doesn't have to, but he does. He confides this to us. What this tells us is that what we have, lo que tenemos viene de otro, what we have, the goods that we have, the talents we have, the abilities we have, the possessions we have, come from another who is good to us and he trusts us with it. No? Lo que tenemos viene de otro. Y nos confía esto, que es una, una confianza que Dios tiene en nosotros. Que él, él, él quiere que nosotros vayamos a, a multiplicar lo que Él nos ha dado. He, he, he trusts us to, to take what He gives us and to multiply it, make it more. Only He's not talking about money. He's talking about something else. And this is important because, you know, we, we often think that if you want more, you have to take it. No? Porque el mundo piensa de otra manera. Si quieres más, hay que acumular más. Hay que tomar más. Hay que poseer más. So if you want more, you got to possess more. That's how this parable goes against that, because the, from the very beginning, if you want more, you have to give more. That's, the, that's what's going on here, because the Lord, he gives more. And he gives to you, and he gives to me. All these things that we have, the little things and the big things, we're all different. That's why there's different kinds of talents. The point is not what kind of talent. The point is, what are you going to do with it? ¿Qué vas a hacer con lo que te he dado? And so, what he says is, he praises the ones who, the gospel says, who in, who, in Spanish, salieron a negociar con el talento, no, they, they, they negotiated, which means they, they invested it. Investing is a risk. I, I'm not an investor when it comes to anything. 
of monetary value, but, but it's a risk. You risk, you might lose it. It's a riesgo, no? Negociar con el, con el talento, porque el riesgo es que lo vas a perder. Pero el Señor prefiere a alguien que tome la decisión de arriesgarlo, de invertir su propio ser. You invest your own person, your own life, when you give something like that, and you take a risk. By giving it away, by putting it in somebody else's care. But the Lord does that with us. El Señor tome el riesgo en darlo a nosotros, darlo a, a nosotros. Entonces nos pide dar, tomar el riesgo de negociar con esto, ponerlo en juego, to put it in play, to gamble with it even. He's not talking about gambling like casinos. He's talking about investing yourself and not remaining indifferent and not hanging on to it. You got to work with it. Take a chance. And the chance to make something more is the chance of giving it. Trying something new with it. Because the kingdom is not about what you held on to, what I held on to. El Señor me dio esto, entonces lo voy a guardar. El reino no tiene que ver con, tanto con guardar las cosas, sino que multiplicar las cosas del reino. It's about the giving of it. So the one who had five made five more. The one who had two made two more. And then there's that unfortunate person who decided it's better to hang on to it. El último, el que decidió no poner el juego lo que tenía, not to, the one who decided not to put it in play, not to take the chance, and ended up burying it. He is not praised. because he decided it was more important to hang on to what he had than try to make it multiply. You see, from the parables of the seeds and the sower all the way to the late parables about, about taking what you have received and then putting it in play in some way, is that it, the, the Lord expects it to grow. He expects that after all he's given us, that when he comes back on the last day, we will show him more. More what? Si, si el, el, si el dueño al regresar nos va a pedir enseñarle que, que, que toma, tomemos, tomamos lo que él nos dio y lo multiplicamos, quiere ver lo que hemos multiplicado. And he's not talking about bank accounts. No está hablando de las cuentas del banco. Está hablando de los bienes del Espíritu, los bienes del reino. He's talking about the goods of the Spirit, the goods of the kingdom. If you have received love, have you loved? Si hemos recibido el amor de Dios, ¿hemos amado? If we've received mercy, have we, been, have we given mercy away? Are we always calculating whether somebody deserves it or not? No? Si hemos recibido la misericordia, hemos tratado de tratar misericordiosamente con otra persona, con otra persona, to give? Because he gives us mercy, and he wants us to show him that we have been more merciful than mercy has spread in the universe because we were here. Quiere saber que al fin de cuentas, la misericordia se ha multiplicado en este mundo porque estamos aquí. Que el perdón se ha multiplicado en el mundo porque estamos aquí y hemos perdonado. And even if we're talking about physical goods, money and possessions, were we willing to give them away? Porque el mundo piensa que para recoger más hay que tener más y guardar más. Y Jesús nos dice, hay que dar más para poder recibir más. The world tells us that if you want more, you have to hang on to more. 
Jesus in the kingdom and about the kingdom says, if you, if you give more, you will receive more. Oh, that's so hard for us. No, qué tan difícil lo que nos enseña el Señor. Si quieres recibir más, tienes que dar más. Pero Señor, ¿cómo? How is that? How can it be that if I give more, I will receive more? Everything I watch and I hear on the internet, on the television, tells me I have to get more if I want more. Ah. Y lo que dice el Señor, the Lord says, trust me. There is nothing in this world that we give away that does not in some way from God come back to us. No hay nada que podemos nosotros dar en este mundo sin que, sin que el Señor mismo lo multiplique y regrese a nosotros. Pero no por eso lo hacemos, but that's not why we do it. We don't do it so we can get more. We do it because the Lord asks us to give and I will take care of you. If you are generous, I will be generous. If you are merciful, I will be merciful. If you learn to love, I will love. What do I want to see? ¿Qué, qué quiere el Señor cuando regresamos? ¿Qué quiere ver? What does he want to see? That we've multiplied a little mercy, a little less judgment, a lot more forgiveness. And maybe some of our possessions that we could do without, and maybe somebody who doesn't have it could have it. Agua para beber y algo que comer. We learned this when we were little, ¿no? Nosotros de pequeño nos enseñaban nuestros abuelos, ¿no? Hijo, si quieres, si cuidas de alguien que, están, que necesita ayuda, Dios te va a cuidar. If you look after somebody who's in trouble, God will take care of you. He really will. It multiplies. Los bienes del Espíritu se multiplican. Los bienes del reino. Y por eso, ya no estamos hablando de semillas que no tienen mente, estamos hablando de personas y las decisiones que tomamos. We're talking about people now, us, and the decisions we make, how we use what we've been given, whether it's good for somebody else or is it just for me. Hay que regresar a la figura del dueño, ¿no? Let's go back to the figure of the one who started it all by giving the, the talents. Es el Señor, the one who gives the talents. It is the Lord. What did he invest? El Señor, en esta parábola que es el Señor Jesús. ¿Qué invirtió él? What did he give? Su vida. His life. Invirtió la vida. Porque la semilla que cae a la tierra muere. Y da mucho fruto. Because the seed that falls to the ground and dies bears much fruit. Es la lógica del reino. It's the logic of the kingdom of God. And it takes an act of faith. No, esto es lo que significa la fe. En largo sentido, amplio sentido. Si eres generoso, Dios te va a cuidar. ¿Creemos esto? If we are generous, that God will take care of us? Do we believe this? I think we do. But we need the Lord's help. Porque a veces es difícil. The Lord is good to us. We can afford to be good to one another. De eso se trata el reino. Some ways it's very simple. But we are involved in this. And the Lord asks us to respond. That we take what he has given us. And show him more. That is how the kingdom grows.